Okay, so we just finished off uh, showing you that NH3 um, is on the uh, right side of the table, which means it can be a weak uh, base here, um, which means it has these equilibrium arrows that are between the NH3 and the NH4+. Plus. So really to be strong, you're looking for chemicals that have one-way arrows, and um, in order to be weak, you have to have these equilibrium arrows. Now just going back to um, these compounds up here, we mentioned earlier uh, that chloride, or maybe it was, uh, I think actually it was HSO4 minus, I'm gonna go here, HSO4 minus. In an earlier video, we saw that that compound was on the right side of the table, and also on the left side of the table. And we were talking about um, amphiprotic compounds at the time. And we said that um, HSO4 is weird because it has H's to give up, so it could be an acid. It also has a negative charge, and you know, could it be a could it be a base? And if you notice, it's actually under the base column. Here, here it is as a base. But what's really important here is that um, we have this one-way arrow here. And so this compound is the conjugate, a lot of fancy words gonna come here. This word, this compound, HSO4 minus, is the conjugate base of H2SO4, but it cannot act as a base. It's not able to take a proton and turn back into H2SO4. So although it's under the base column, um, it's really thought of as being the conjugate base of the acid H2SO4, but cannot act as a base. It can only act as an acid, and that's shown by this chemical right here. So it's able to turn into SO4 2 minus, but it's not able to take a proton and go back into be sulfuric acid. So that is um, uh, maybe an exception we have to look for for amphiprotic compounds that although the chemicals may be on both sides of the table, we also have to be concerned about whether the original compound was strong or was uh, weak. Uh, so generally, um, amphiprotic compounds, um, they have to be um, weak uh, acids and weak bases in order to be able to do both uh, transactions. Okay, so we'll talk more about that uh, a bit later here. So I'm just gonna go back to the original notes here. Um, close that down. So I'm gonna write a few chemicals down here, and what I'd like you to do is decide which of these chemicals um, are strong and, and which ones are weak. So why don't you maybe circle all the strong ones and I don't know, put a square around the, the, the weak ones maybe. So I may, maybe label them um, either uh, strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base. Because you wanna be able to distinguish um, between uh, what, what, what they are, I guess. Uh, or maybe they're both. Maybe they're maybe they're amphiprotic. You never know, right? So um, so uh, here we go. So let's take a look at uh, um, these compounds here. Okay, so um, let's take a look here. So HSO4 um, minus, um, it is on both sides of the table, but it can only act as an acid, so it is a weak acid. Okay. Um, HCO3 is on both sides of the table, and um, it could be a weak acid, but it could also be um, a weak base. And so that would mean that that compound uh, is capable of being amphiprotic, uh, depending on its circumstances. Um, SO4 2 minus, um, there's no protons with that. Um, so we should look on the table, and if we look, we'll see that it actually um, fits as a weak base. Um, NH3 is on both sides of the table, but at the very bottom under the acid column, it can't go in the forward direction. So this is only a weak base. Uh, water, um, it's a weak base, we've seen that before, and it can also act as a weak acid. I'm just gonna go back to the table to show uh, that one, because kind of just sort of talking without 
showing these things. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of uh, this fancy writing. Okay, so water is here. So there it is under the base column and it's got equilibrium, so it can be a weak base. I go right to the bottom here. Um, where are we here? Water, water. And there's water under the acid column and it can definitely go in the forward direction. So water is amphiprotic. Um, whereas NH3 uh, can be a weak base, but cannot be a weak acid because of that, that arrow right there. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, a lot of jumping around here. So HF, uh, it is only um, an acid, so it's a weak acid. You see the equilibrium arrows on the table. And carbonic acid is only a weak acid. It can't take a proton. And H2S is only a weak acid. Okay. Um, so let's just write two more and see what you guys think. Let's write it with the oxide ion. And let's say something like H um, pi, or HI. Okay, so the oxide ion is right at the bottom of the table under the base column, and it can only go one way, so it is a strong base. And HI is right at the top of the table, or near the top, and it's under the acid column, and so it can only be a strong acid. Okay, so let's, let's take two of these weak uh, compounds. Let's take HF and H. Uh, H2S. So both of those are weak acids. As we said that above. But let's say we asked a question that said, which is the weaker of the weak acids? So what, what would that even mean in the first place? So which, which acid is weaker? Now, um, when we say weak, we, we, we're referring to the fact it doesn't ionize 100%. So if you were a weaker acid, you'd be the one that ionized less. So if you had an acid that ionized 90% of the time, and an acid that only ionized 30% of the time, let's call this acid number, Roman numeral number one, this number two, which one would you say is the weaker acid? If this is the amount that they ionize, the amount that they turn water into an ion. Well, the weaker one would be this one. It only ionizes 30%. Uh, because obviously 100% ionization would be the biggest number you can get, and that would be for a strong acid. So um, there's two ways to do this. One's mathematical, and one's just looking at the data table. It's really easy to figure this out. Um, so if we look at the data table, why the data table is so important to get your head around how to use. So I'm going to erase all this fancy stuff here, um, get rid of that. And what you'll notice on the uh, left and right sides of the table is you have this arrow um, Kind of hard me to shrink it down. You have this arrow here um, on this side, and this is the strength of the acids. And they increase as you go up, where the strong acids are at the top. So strong acids are up here, and the weak ones are lower down below that. And on the far side, you've got another arrow that actually points downwards. And you'll notice that the strong bases are down here. So this base strength increases as you go down, and the acid strength increases as you go up. So let's look for those two compounds then. Let's look at them, uh, what we're, we're looking at on the page there. So we have the acid HF, which is right here. And the other acid was um, uh, HF, H2S, right, there we go, H2S. So they're both weak. They both have these equilibrium arrows, but the HF is higher up on the table um, than the H2S. And so according to the arrow, HF should be a stronger weak acid than H2S. So that would mean that HF ionizes more in water than H2S would. Um, now there are these numbers on the far side, which we'll talk about in later videos. Um, and that's more the mathematical part of it where you can actually use numbers to prove um, how much it actually ionizes. But as a simple rule, if you just wanna know which acid is stronger, always pick the one higher up on the table. It's a much, much faster way than trying to calculate out values and stuff. So um, that's that. So I'm gonna just write two more questions for you and then I think we're gonna call this video the end of the day. Um, so let's uh, get rid of that. So let's, let's say you're comparing um, H2CO3, um, HNO3, and um, one more here, let's say H, uh, where's the last one here, H, H3, 